I got a treat for you today. We're going to hear from the expert Kendall of Kendall Shine here at Keystone that made this massive tanker, sand tanker, look like chrome. How he polishes it and how do you keep the shine on it? Because they're going down to Florida with this rig and we're taking our rig to all the, the you know, Laconia, Daytona, Maricade, all the rallies. It's going to get messed up. How do you keep it this nice? So, Kendall. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule here this Sunday morning. Here you're making the magic happen. Um, you did a beautiful job uh, on the truck and the trailer, and, and you just mentioned that you think we did it right because you did a lot of stainless, which is a little easier to keep nice. But uh, how, how do you keep in the real world? How do you get it this shiny, both the aluminum rims and tank and the stainless? How do you do it? Nah, like you said, we built it right with all the stainless, so it's going to be very simple and a very wax on wax off kind of treatment um, anytime you get it we like to run like a week say you get out a week and you get your truck washed you try to get your water off of your aluminum because you don't know if it's hard water it might spot it so you try to dry it and then I like to take this roadworks metal polish and I'll take a little bit of bush and I make it about a 50-50 or a three-quarter to a quarter mix. I like more of the road works because it wipes off so easy. So three-quarter road works, 25% bush, you mix it up like on a, on, a, on a pad or something? I just mix it right in the bottle. In the bottle. Oh, wow. I, that's, that's a trick I would have never have known of. <laughs> and it... Um, the bush dries a lot faster. If you put like your whole wheel onto the bush, you wipe really, really hard to get it off. Okay. So if you mix it like I do, you can do your whole truck and then come around and wipe off. Okay. It, this is more of a stainless polish. Okay. And this is more of an aluminum polish. I'm just killing the air noise here. Okay, so, sorry about that. Where, where were you? Um, it just makes it to where you can do more of one and then wipe off all together your dad was saying sometimes i'll leave that on there for until you get into the show you show up you drive to florida you wash the truck dry it off and then you use this 70 70 percent 30 percent mixture is what you're doing and you put it on and you can how long can you leave it on for before you wipe it off uh you can leave it on for hours um We've actually taken the roadwork straight polish and put it on and drove to the show. Holy shit. <laughs> and um, it'll help with your bugs and your road grind. Wipe it off once you get there. Awesome. You don't worry about it scratching the finish uh, that, that, that protects it? No. Um, it'll, it keeps it above your polish. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So you wipe it off. It never reaches down to your metal. I hope you got a sponsorship from, from Roadworks and, and Bush because they're going to be selling a lot of stuff because of this video <laughs> they should send you a couple cases free but hey that's awesome um what do you use to put it on after you after you wash it you put it on do you use a, an applicator or a... um you can use a wax applicator or i personally just like to use any uh cotton wash rag like a terry um, cloth yes sir okay and then a full cotton bath towel is how i like to wipe off okay um so you use a big towel, uh, one one big towel. Yep. So you can keep rolling it over to the clean spot, finding a clean spot. Yes, sir. Is there any particular motion you use? Like, um, do you have to go uh, forwards and backwards so you make put machine? Uh, are you worried about swirl marks or anything when you're wiping it off? Now, once you get it done from us, we always try to go with the grain of the metal. But okay. there's not a grain once it's done with us because we've taken the grain out. So it, it's perfectly smooth like but these like tanks here. But like on your tank, yeah, you, you wouldn't want to rub like this. You would want to rub top to bottom. Oh, no kidding. Yes. Okay. And is that because that's where the machine was used to polish it? You When you polished it, you... The grain of the tank runs around. Okay, okay. So you'll... I guess work against yourself and scratch the I'm metal. I'm really glad I asked because I would have been telling my guys to do it forwards and backwards. So you go, you polish up and down. Yes, sir. Vertically. Okay. Yep. That's an expert tip I wouldn't have known. What about on the stainless? Uh, like this is stainless, the the the, uh, the 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 ground effects or whatever you call that, okay. and the steps are stainless. Is there any particular motion on those? No, sir. That 
It's kind of more like a paint, uh, the wax on, wax okay. off. So just on the tanks, you go up and down, and then you can do wax on, wax off, circular motions, whatever on the stainless, so it won't matter. So back here, there's no particular motion, just, just whatever works. Yes, sir. Off. Yep. Okay, and that's all stainless, that's stainless. The fenders are stainless. What about the aluminum rims? Is there a particular direction on that too? Where there, you're just gonna wanna go, you know, right around, just like, right around the wheel and keep, I guess whatever way flows the best through the wheel, that's yep. the best way you're gonna wanna go. So if you put any micro scratches or anything, it's gonna look like a machine poly, a machine did it. Yep. It won't be uh, hairy canary scratches. The aluminum's softer than the stainless, I, I think, is it? Yes. So it's less, it's more likely that if you were gonna, like you said, fighting yourself, uh, going front to back, you want to go up and down so it'll, whatever scratches you put in it, there are micro scratches, will match the machine finish, yes. I guess, and the same thing with the rims, but that's not the case on the stainless, right? Correct. Stainless is a lifetime finish, uh, more or less. Now, if you get, it'll get road beat in the front, which you yep. can sand that over time, but I mean, you build a longevity build here with your truck. Yeah, that, that's all stainless in the middle there. The only aluminum would be this and that right there. And also this came from um, Cobra with the diamond tread plate on here. Is there any particular motion on the diamond tread plate uh, or is it like the stainless where it doesn't matter? Um, there, I like to use a, a DA palm sander. Okay. Otherwise you tear your fingers up. So bad. So DA palm sander. With a foam pad. Foam pad. Right but, down here, I have one. See how nicely they polish the tanks in here? So th these these are stainless tanks, so these will be just the road works and maybe a little bit of bush? Yes. Okay. But um, look, just a foam pad on a... This is, this is a black cutting pad. On a palm sander and then you just put your polish on it? Yep and work it out all even on your aluminum i guess it would be like you don't want or to put on, your metal polish on your paint but yep on your stainless or on any stainless door covers here down here you would just do there and you could do that whole section with this mojo or the road works Excellent. and with your foam pad do that whole section and work it in till it's good and gray and you can kind of see through the film that it leaves and see the metal Yep. what you're getting left behind and just work it the more you work it the more it'll shine excellent let's take a look at the different pads you have over here so these are the different pads you've got laid out here that you use on on your air or electric da you've got a uh, cutting pad and they're basically if you push on the foam you can feel the oh, stiffness wow. difference i would never thought of doing it. this is the heavy cutting and that's the the stiffest yep and that's the next level up cutting now it's a black cutting pad and a, and a white cutting pad. Is one harsher than the other? Yes, sir. This is a lot softer. Okay. And this is just a little denser, uh, stiffer foam for cutting aluminum versus wax in your paint. So this you might use to put wax on your paint just to not really take much off. This will cut out water spots and iron marks if we were to put them in in order uh, of harshest to, to, to lightest what would it be just for for the, the, the dummies out there including me who's a little confused <laughs> right so, there. okay so softest this, to hardest so you would if you had some scratches you needed to get out you'd start with this yes. and work your way up to this yes now, now that it's this nice and shine you would just start off with this, right? Yes, sir. To get some, like, let's say if you had water spots on there or salt spots from on the road. Uh, is that the same stuff you'd use on, on the polished aluminum yep. rims back here? Yes, sir. Um, you can keep the black foam pad throughout your whole truck. And if um, you didn't have the black foam pad, uh, could you use the applicator pad, the terry cloth or, or a terry cloth? Yep, it is, it's the same thing. It's just a six inch surface ran with a machine versus all arm power. So the DA would be faster. If you want to do the whole truck, you're getting ready for a show, or, or you want to uh, do a final detail before you take it on the road, that's how you do it. Yes, sir. Well, that's good to know. So let's let's back up a second here. You guys have already made the magic happen, and there's I did a before video, which I posted, and I'll put, that, I'll put the before video, guys, 
I'll, I'll pin that in the first comment. So if you want to see what this looked like before, the, before um, it got this major shine on it, uh, there, was, there was some sanding that happened. Can you describe the process, how, how that's done? So if somebody has a piece of aluminum on their motorcycle, because most of our, our guys watching are motorcycle guys, or if they have a truck and aluminum and they want to take the time to make the magic happen, you start out like, like with a paint finish, you start out with a harsher grip. What do you recommend starting out with? Um, say you want, say you got a painted exhaust and you want to make it polished stainless. I would take and start sanding with a 180 sandpaper grit yep. and sand that up through to six or 800. So you go 180, 240, 320. Or 180, 320, 600, 600, 800. Okay, and that's how you take, and now these are the original 2007 rims with 540,000 miles. They didn't look nothing like, like this when I dropped it off. So to get it to that level, you do the three different grits whether it's aluminum here or on the front. This front bumper, had it's a moose bumper. It had taken out a couple of moose, and I don't know what else it hit, but there were a lot of scratches and gouges in here, and now it shines like chrome. So that, that would be the 180, 320, 600, 800. Pol and then you go to your polishing rouges. Uh, what we had just talked about was your maintenance of the stainless and aluminum to keep it nice, and you use the, 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 the roadworks and the bush and the applicator pads and a terry cloth to keep it nice but to take a, a a a messed up old motorcycle engine case or a messed up old bull bar like this and make it look this nice you have some wheels that you use inside of there too right in different rouges yes sir that <laughs> now that's more of the art um there's several different colors of pads and rouges that you could use um, we like to use the marple pink. It's a heavy cut, but yep. it also leaves a very nice finish. It works across stainless, aluminum, um, and once you get it sanded with your grits, you got your 180, 320, 180, 320, 6, and 800 up there. We just learned this from your from your dad maybe two weeks ago and we've just done our first couple of motorcycle restorations using the 320 600 and 800 and it's amazing how much nicer the forks the engine cases the 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 wheels you can take a ratty old set of motocross wheels off an 89 kicks 500 like we did uh -huh. and sanding them down and they came out freaking like chrome it did take 13 hours to do the the wheels and, and the in the forks and, and the the muffler and some other components but the bike's going to be a showpiece and that's your refinishing metal at this point i mean um that's what it is it you, it's an art you got to have a passion to do it you got to be obsessed you got to have that vision i want the nicest looking kx 500 ever ever done yep and you want and the best one i've ever done it's that's what you got to start and then after you do your sanding then you go to the polishing and there's not only different uh, rouges there's different pads which just like the polishing pads there you, you almost go from like a if this was a grit would you call this like an 80 grit or something or? yeah i would call this your 80 grit i mean that's as hard as a rock it would cut your it would cut right through your arm if you wanted to right yep this is uh this is a zephra pad it's that's what we use at our shop yeah clear dipped um and it's especially for stainless this hard of a pad is and then there's some, um, like this is a lot more malleable. So now you start off with your harder grit and you use the harder rouge with that one, the heavy cut rouge, right? Yes. Um, you're going to use a heavy cut rouge on anything you sand um, for the most part. Um, and then there's a finish rouge which you would use with an ultra soft pad. Now, now this, this is you could, you could put shine. this on your face at, at, you could, you could sleep on this. It's like a pillow. Uh, it, it, like, like this thing wouldn't hurt your arm at all at 6,000 RPM. This would cut your arm off. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a hundred percent cotton flannel. Um, that's actually put the magic shine on with that. Yep. This is your showtime finish right here. So you use the, the, the Vol Marpole Volax finish. Um, I don't know where my purchasing agent buys this stuff from, but we buy like, um, I think it's from the Zephyr. He buys it from Zephyr, the bars. Mm -hmm. So you can get it anywhere on online uh, we directly. We use from um, Highway Shine in 
they're out of effort of Pennsylvania. Uh, they have a website and everything, but that is where we get all of our polishing supplies and all with the exception of our sandpaper. We get that at a logo place. Um, Guys, if you have a big rig like this, if you've got a big camper, um, I had my Volvo and the camper in here, and they put the shine on all aluminum on the camper. I'll share this on the HDT RV uh, web page, uh, forums. If you got a rig and you want it to shine like this and you don't have the time to do it, these are the guys that are the best in the industry at it, and they will completely restore your vehicle for you like, they, like they've done for us here. If you want to keep it maintained or do some touch-ups, these, the these are the ways that you'll do it. And, and what he's showing us now is the is the um, how to restore aluminum in, in, in stainless too. And I did want to say, like with your finish rouge, anyone who's going to want to try that, you're going to use that on a slower, more variable speed buffer. This is going to be on a six thousand RPM buffer. The this, big heavy duty one. Yeah, yeah you want to only run this at about. 2600 rpms see i didn't know that is there a reason why you go slower on the final you'll streak it and burn it no kidding so fast yeah this, i had no idea this will put a white streak or a brown streak if you move up too fast or push too hard or wow. don't have enough so it's like a final like you, you, you don't push as hard you go a little lighter it's very finicky yes wow if you're cleaning this is your cleaning step basically you're yeah. just taking off all but what's left over from your heavy cut step. If you had to guess, like, the, the tanker that you're bringing to the show next week. Yes, sir. How many hours does it take uh, 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 between sanding, buffing, everything um, on a tanker to get it to that that level, the show level? Me and my dad personally, I would personally say probably anywhere between three and 4,000 hours. It's, it's, it's just absolutely, it's a serious commitment. We've Yeah, that trailer's been sanded down. And it looks like three times now complete to get it to that when i met you guys at the mid-america truck show there was it was like bees to, to, to uh, honey there there was 10 people deep around the trailer and the <laughs> truck and that's when i said I, I met you guys said i want these guys to do my truck and i am ecstatic what you guys have done here when i came around the corner and saw the back of this truck and the way it turned out compared to what it looked like when i pulled it out of the barn up in alaska it's just freaking remarkable and i get a lot I get a lot more gratification taking something like this and making it beautiful rather than buying it. Anybody can buy a new truck, right? Yes, sir. And uh, anybody can buy a new motorcycle, but taking something and making it your own and making it nicer than a new truck for me is, is uh, I think, a, not only a better investment, but it's a lot more personal gratification. And um, if you want to keep the stuff nice like these guys do, that's how you do it. There's an old saying, and... Uh You've nailed it to the T on this one, and it's built, not bought. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It was definitely worth it, and, and uh, the truck has uh, exceeded my expectations uh, in all the little details, like the, the they're not so little, but the, the, the stainless, getting rid of the old, the, the old plastic door covers and polishing. These were like a dull aluminum in here, and they shine like chrome now, including the, the, um, the cover for the batteries, but uh, just an amazing job. So this this is this is the rig that pulled People's Choice at the largest truck show in the United States of America, Mid America Truck Show, and it's only gotten better since last year. Especially the truck, it's amazing how much work they've done to it. But there's a lot of time and effort taking a, a raw piece of aluminum this big and making it look that shiny. And personally, I think we have ten times the truck this year than we had last year. It's incredible. Your dad and I were cranking the tunes up last night in that, and I've never been in a vehicle where my hair actually moved because of the base. The base in that thing was, it's its like almost like wind. It's its absolutely incredible. You feel your whole shirt, shirt moving and everything. That's, and I hate to sound unrealistic, but um, I've been to excision concerts and big heavy bass concerts like that. And it's not like I can't compare the truck to that, but when we first cranked it up, I was standing about right where you are and I turned around and I honestly think you could see the airwaves moving. Wow. Like, wow. It'll push 10,000 peak watts. So it's insane. 
But the, the, the cool part is it doesn't, because it's such clean power, it doesn't like hurt your ears. You just, your whole body, it's almost like, it's like one, one of my better songs, he, favorite songs he put on, I, <laughs> I like made the hair stand up on my arms. Like, it's like, like taking drugs almost. It just makes you feel, you feel, you really feel the music, literally. Yep, I mean, it's a very clear, crisp sound. Um, our friend Rob, the fellow who did it for us, he really knocked it out. He's absolutely a stereo genius, no doubt about it. And you guys are a genius at the polishing and painting and, and construction. So you guys, with Chad painting and you polishing and your dad and your granddad, three generations working together um, to build the best trucks in the United States of America, possibly the best trucks in the world. I mean, if you're winning at the big shows, th a, these could be the best trucks in the world. You that's know? a tall order, and you hate to stand up too tall and say that, but... We put a lot of pride in our work and we... Well, I think the people say it for you. You know, when you get People's Choice Award at the biggest truck show in the country and there's thousands of people there and there's thousands of beautiful trucks, just to even... I mean, there had to be 50 trucks that were almost as nice as your truck. But, to, I mean, there, there's some heavy hitters there and it's a... The competition pool is deep at that show. I mean, you can you can walk around all day long I and mean, you better have sneakers and, and it's row after row after row of... People have done the same thing, spent, you know, years building the nicest truck they could possibly come up with. And I appreciate that. And I know my dad and my grandpa, we all, we appreciate that. There's a reason I, I drove a thousand mile round trip to have, have, have my truck <laughs> down here. You know, uh, it, it was, uh, you know, and there's not a lot of shops that can do everything. So this is one of the tools of the trade that, um, that Kendall uses here. Uh, it's a, tell us what this is. This is your variable speed. This is my finish buffer, I call it. This is what I blew. Um, your finish rouge and your very soft pad. This is anything I polish, I go over this with completely last. Um, this can make or break you. And um, the way you use it, uh, I, I've never told my guys who are doing a polish in our shop anything about the speed and or the pressure. And the, well, that might explain why maybe the shine hasn't been as good on some of the items as you're pumping out here, you know? That's, you can have, you can put too much rouge on your pad at once, or you could run it too long and not have enough. This is something that really takes a seasoned eye to know if you're getting your most out of your metal. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's like a, a given up, a, any, anybody can grab the best paint gun on the planet, but doesn't mean they can put a paint job on. And the polishing is the same thing. You're creating a, a fine finish that takes time and, and uh, practice to get right, like anything else, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been doing this for probably close to 23 years now. How many hours policy? Let's see, 23 hours, uh, tw how many years? 23, probably. 23 years. If you did, let's see, do a little math here. Let's pause the camera for a second and grab the calculator here. But Kendall's been doing, working here for 23 years. We rounded it down to 20. And how many hours was it? Uh, 23,000. I thought it was 33,000. Let's do it again. You go 44,160 hours. And I've heard it said that become a master at anything, whether it's arts, basketball, um, music, you got to do 10,000 hours. Flying an airplane, racing a motorcycle, you got 44,000 hours. So um, you've learned a thing or two in your time. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. And, and, and not just the polishing, obviously, you've seen. You guys are building these trucks to win shows. So you're coming up with... And this truck won best of show last year, but it wasn't good enough for you guys, was it? <laughs> I don't know if we could have taken out the, the judge competition, Don Woods, last year, but we came home with the full expectation to go down and try this year. So, yeah, it's it's uh, evident that uh, you were shoot, shoot, and this truck's not fully assembled, guys, so um don't judge it yet but you can see there an obscene amount of time and money and effort has been put into this this is one of my favorite parts we uh saran wrap the floor so it looks like petrified wood it's freaking beautiful we did a uh a, a video of the of it last night with all the lights on it too it's got an awesome light show so guys if you want to get your truck done or if you or if you want to uh just get a polish on or a paint job. They can do anything you want here. Give them a call. Keystone in Somerset, Pennsylvania. Look them up online. I've got a bunch of videos of them just punching Kaplan, Keystone. And uh, you'll see uh, a bunch of videos from the shows that, I'm, that I was at and uh, 
some of the, the few times I've been back here checking it out. In fact, there, there's some videos of this truck right down to the frame about three months ago. It was nothing but a frame. There was no engine. There was no cab. In fact, this cab was dragged out of the woods and completely frame up restored uh, in the last few months, right? This came off an, a, an older peak, yeah, right? We found this down in West Virginia and we wanted a little bigger bunk, a little more headroom for my dad. So we found a stand up. It was in the woods, like Ken said. Sat there for probably five years. Kendall, thank you for sharing the tips of the trade. Obviously, you guys have taken it to another level. Wish you guys the best of luck on the show circuit this year. Give them a call if you want to get your truck or your trailer done or even your motorcycle parts. They do motorcycle parts through the hook you right up. Ken Shine. Amen. Thanks for watching, guys. You even got your logo on the back now, right? Yes, sir. And shine it does. Thanks a lot, and God bless America.